Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear us? Yes. Yeah, let us know in the chat if it's working. We are live, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little um, technical difficulty, but I think now we are good. Yeah. So hello, everyone, and welcome to a new Edivision season. Exactly. Season number four. Wow. Yeah. It's been four seasons. Exactly. And we're live on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and as a new platform, Crowdcast. Yes. So hit the thumbs up button if you're watching this episode from YouTube. Exactly. Heart. Heart. If from you're watching from Facebook. And a light bulb if you're watching this from LinkedIn. Exactly. We are so happy to, to be back. So for those joining for the very first time, we are Melissa and Roxana, and we are part of the Arduino Education team. And we will be hosting a new episodes every Thursday for the next 10 weeks with new guests and new demos. And today we will have fun with programming and celebrate International Programmers Day. Exactly. So how are you? We want to know who you are what you do, from where you're joining. Let us know in the chat. Yeah, say hello from where you are joining. And uh, as you may know, uh, or maybe not, but we started EduVision two years ago as a part of our remote learning initiative to support and inspire teachers, students, parents, or anyone that wants to learn about education and technology. Exactly. And uh, remember that we have a dedicated website where you can read articles, watch tutorials, and the previous Edivision episodes, if you haven't seen them. Exactly. And I can share my screen to show that website. Yeah, let's take a look at the website. You can find everything there uh, for this new season and also for the past Edivision seasons there. Nice. Nice. So, oh, there's a sneak peek of what's happening. Arduino CC, Education, Edivision. Exactly. Nice. You can see also upcoming episodes, mm -hmm. articles, tutorials, everything in one place. So it's very cool if you can check the website. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as you saw. <gasps> yes. We have great news, right? Yeah. A surprise. We have something completely new for you guys. Yeah. We are very excited to tell you that we started a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the first episode is now live. Mm -hmm. You can find the podcast from our Edivision site. So here you can find the Edivision podcast. Exactly. Here is the first episode. Yeah. And you can also find it from, for example, Anchor, where we have different links and Spotify. It's going to be on Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcast, yeah. But you can find all, all of that and also all the episodes on our website if that's easy for you. Exactly. Yeah. Everything Are, in one place. Yeah, exactly. And we are going to publish a new episode weekly. And we're going to talk with amazing guests from all around the world. And we're going to discuss different topics such as programming, IoT, open source, and much more. And we're going to hope that you're going to learn a lot from this episode. Yeah, exactly. In the live that we have here today, that you're now joining, we can see you commenting. Uh, we have a guest who is going to present the project user. Mm -hmm. So they have some kind of Arduino or other project that they would like to share with you guys and show. It. And in the live, you can see the part. But in the podcast, we go, we dive deeper into the topic, exactly. their field and what they're kind of known for. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same content. Yeah. So if you want to listen to the podcast, you get like a, yeah, better idea of that person and what they're working with. Yeah. And, and a lot of great tips. Yeah, of course, exactly. That's very important because they are experienced in education, of course, technology. So you can listen to the tips uh, and tricks that they have. And then there is no excuse. You can take uh, us with you wherever you are at whatever time. So that's awesome. So if you like to listen to us while cleaning, that's possible. Exactly. So look, there are so many people writing from Colombia, Poland, the US, Egypt. Thank you guys so much for joining us uh, today on this first episode from Iran, Spain, Chicago, Morocco. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Poland. Yeah. Many people there. Cool. Thank you so much for, for joining. So 
Uh, let's get started with today's topic. So next week on September 13, we celebrate the International Programmers Day. So congratulations to all the programmers out there. Thank you for all the, the work you're doing to make our lives easier. Thank you. And I would like to know how many of you watching this are now consider themselves as programmers? Yeah. Or is there someone who is completely new to programming? I saw there was a some comment that we already shared. Was it Joshua? Yeah. Yeah. New to Arduino, but mm -hmm. are you new to programming? And yeah. it's cool because he's a chemist. So mm -hmm. that's very interesting. Yeah, as Melissa was asking you, how experienced are you in programming? Uh, sometimes uh, programming can be seen as super hard to get started with. Uh, but it shouldn't be that hard, right? No. No, I started with programming after high school. No, actually, maybe earlier. My, my background with programming is that I wanted to make my own PlayStation game. Oh, so nice. I wanted to learn <laughs> how to do that. So to be able to do that, you have to learn how to program. Exactly. So, and also many educators and students uh, can face uh, some challenges while they start teaching and learning uh, programming and, and coding as part of their, of their curriculum, right? Yeah. Yeah, especially when they're starting to become teachers mm -hmm. or back in the days, they were maybe not taught exactly how what to is programming do that. Yeah. or how to program. So now, then, now that they have to teach it to others, it's not that easy. Yeah, and now we have a lot of, of tools uh, there so you can use it and to see yeah. others' tutorials and how to start. So now it's a little bit easier to yeah. start with but programming. But it's still like where to start from. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> and I think today's guest, our special guest today, is going to give us some tips on where to get started. So with today's special guest, we're going to talk about programming and coding education. And he will share with us some starter Arduino projects. Mm -hmm. He has created for teachers to get started, as well as a full-size character from Star Wars. Oh, nice. And we also have a, a project, right? And we're going to show that later on, and it's an automated hand. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how to create your own yeah. flex sensors. Exactly. Awesome. That sounds great. But now it's, turn, or it's time to... Uh, to uh, welcome our first guest of the season, Dr. Damien Key from Australia. Yes. So Dr. Damien Key, our guest, is a passionate educational technologies advocate who specializes in bringing technology, technology concepts to teachers and educators around the world. Yeah. With a focus in robotics, programming, and electronics, he works to educate teachers on the benefits with which technology can be embedded into their daily classroom activities. Yeah, exactly. We had a super interesting discussion about programming uh, in education and, uh, and his work to support other educators. And now Damien is going to present us uh, some Arduino projects that he has created and follow them, uh, the classroom, and two others on his own interests. So, Let's take a look. About, about the conceptions that are out there about programming. And one of them too is like, oh no, this is maybe could even scary or it's so hard. Why is it so hard to learn programming? Why people say, oh no, programming. They want to stay out of that. Look, pro programming, when you dive into the really deep stuff, yeah, it can be really complicated, but there's no reason why getting started should be complicated. There are plenty of tools around there that allow us to teach at a very, not just young, you know, physical age, but people that haven't done, you know, older generations that haven't done programming before. There are so many resources out there just to get them started into this idea of computational thinking and programming. There's been a huge development in graphical programming languages, Blockly, Scratch, all those sorts of things. Um, you can even program Arduinos with, you know, block-based coding. And that's a great way to introduce people to the ideas of coding without having to worry about getting your brackets right, remembering your semicolon at the end of every line and all those sorts of things. Yeah, so I understand why people kind of look at it all and it goes, oh, it looks a little bit tough, but the resources we're coming up with are making it easier and easier. Uh, the flip side is, you know, programming is a language just like French or Japanese or Chinese or Russian or anything like that. You, you learn the syntax, you learn how it all goes together and it's a way of communicating just in what your, your first language. Yeah. Yeah, it requires some work, of course, like 
<laughs> we're not going to master Chinese in one day. So of course exactly. we need to, yeah, we need to. It requires some effort for yeah, sure. <laughs> practice and but learn. But we can the... master. But we can master saying hello, saying goodbye, asking mm -hmm. please, and pointing me to the direction of the bus stop in one or yeah. two days. And that's yeah, you know just having those little wins is a great place to start. Yeah, definitely. That's true. I'm thinking you already mentioned some of the things that people can maybe start with, for example, using block, block pro programming. But is there something else that you would like to share how to help break down the barriers, how to get started? Yeah, so did you want to see a couple of my little uh, projects that I put together? And so what I've got here is just an Arduino, a bunch of LEDs, a little push button and a speaker, like very, very simple stuff. There's, you know, a couple of dozen components, a dozen wires in there, nothing terribly complicated. And if I just apply a bit of power to it. All right, so I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear this, but when you press the button. <laughs> yeah, we can hear it. <laughs> yep. So that's just coming through as, you know, jingle bells. And there's, you know, 20 or 30 lines of code there, not a huge amount. And it's something that kids can achieve in one or two lessons. Once you can flash lights, once you can play a song, and once you can press a button and read that input, yeah, this is now a Christmas ornament. This is now a doorbell. This is now a greeting card. Once you've got the basics, you just kind of expand out from there. So that's my first one. I'll pop that one away. Is I've got a, myself a set of traffic lights. Now these traffic lights here, I've just created in Tinkercad and then 3D printed on a little end of three. And again, nothing terribly complicated. We've got six LEDs in there, six resistors and a bunch of wires. Nothing fancy at all. But if I apply a bit of power to it, so I've now set up a set of traffic lights. It's a little bit washed out there, but you can kind of see the colors changing as they go through. And this is to make sure we've got a nice safe intersection as cars go through. So we're teaching kids here now to start thinking about sequencing. We don't want both green lights on at the same time because we're going to get traffic accidents. So what order do they need to, to go in to make sure that we get a nice safe traffic lights? And, you know, throw in a servo motor and put in some boom gates for some level crossings for trains. Again, starting simple and showing kids what's possible and then branching out from there. All right, so next one. And I can even imagine that uh, someone who doesn't have a traffic light in their neighborhood could plan how it would work for them. Exactly. And then we get yeah. the kids to think about in their particular context, you mm. know, which street would be the best street to put a, a traffic light in. All right, this one here is a servo motor, just connected up and I've just got a little potentiometer down here. So that's a variable resistor. A little bit twitchy, but as I turn it, that pulls it down. So opening and closing. Now I've just used a single servo motor, but there's no reason why we can't put a servo motor on every single finger. So the idea behind this is, is keeping it real simple. But you know, change it up, we've got ourselves a hand which opens and closes. Maybe we turn that into some uh, windows that automatically open and close when the temperature gets too hot or too cold. Yeah. All right, I'll show you one yep. last one in terms of my starter projects, if that's all right. Of course. So the last one I've got here is just a little garage door. So a garage door, I've got a push button and I've got two LEDs, a red LED and a green LED. And so when I power it up, I've got my red LED so saying that my garage door is closed. And then if I press the button here, the garage opens. Oh, <laughs> crushed my car a little bit. That's all right. <laughs> but if you watch the, uh, the LED, we go to a green LED and back down again. So I've just made a little automated garage door. You also have another Arduino project that is maybe not about education or not for teachers, but would you like to share that one? Yeah, so I've got, I've got two here. So I've got one okay. that I can show you live nice. and then I've got another one that I'm going to talk about. So I'm part of uh, what we call the great ball contraption, this idea that you make a Lego device that moves these little Lego balls from one place, from one device to another device. And if we have the same inputs and output dimensions, then it doesn't matter what you build, as long as you know the ball's gonna come in at a certain point and the ball's going to leave at a certain point, then you know you can build whatever you want in between. And so people build these amazing contraptions to move a ball from one place to another place. So this one here is, so this one's not my design, this is uh, someone else's design. And basically it's just cycling the ball through, but there's no reason why I can't have the balls go from here across to the next module, which then send it to the next module, that send it to the next module, that send it to the next module. So one of the projects I did last year was to make this little counter. So this little counter here 
is just uh, a little Nano on the back, Arduino Nano, that is just connected up to a couple of seven segments, four, what have I got, four digit seven segment displays there. And again, that there's nothing complicated about this. I've got half a dozen components that I've soldered to a strip board. And that then goes through to, pull this one up. I've got myself a little infrared um, detector. So as the balls roll past, I can detect it. And so if I put it all together now and give it some power. Grab this one here. There it goes. So every time a ball goes past, it just counts up and it's mm -hmm. roughly one per second. And I've set it up with enough digits that this can go for about three days before it rolls <laughs> over. Um, but you know, and so as people walk past, they can go, ah, oh, there's been 427,817 balls going past or something like that. And it's just a nice little thing just to show our general public, you know, what's actually happening and how many are going past and the fact that it just keeps going and going and going. So yeah, that's one of the this. projects that I quite like and the idea that I'm making this to help our general public see what's going on. You know, again, we, we see a need. We, we had all these people asking us, you know, how many balls have gone past. And I thought, you know what? I can just throw an Arduino on there and a couple of seven segment displays and off I go. Yeah. So that's one of my little projects. My little project mm -hmm. is I'm in the process of building a full scale R2D2. So actual wow. size, um, it's all 3D printed. There's an amazing 3D printed um, Astromech community, which all share plans and all that sort of stuff. And um, I'm going to, it's going to all be controlled by an Arduino. So I've got an Arduino that controls all the, the motor movements and all those sorts of things. Building my own joystick, interfacing the two with a, um, a little um, uh, RF chip between the two of them, controlled by a couple of scooter motors that'll will drive it around. But the idea that I can build this, you know, I'm, I'm not industrial light and magic, you know, working with Disney or anything like that, but I have the resources to be able to build a full size R2D2 and actually drive it around. And again, the electronics aren't complicated. You know, there's a little bit to do, and it's, I certainly won't say it's easy but there's nothing that you know regular people can't wrap their head around so again that's why i love all this arduino stuff you know it makes it so accessible to people i i love getting questions because that means you're doing stuff if you're doing stuff and you're sending me questions it means you're trying something and so that makes me really happy so please send me emails i'll help out wherever i can send me code snippets of what you're trying to do in class and i'm, I'm happy to, to to debug or you know talk through just reach out and just know that as teachers, often our technology teachers, there might be only one or two in a school. They don't have many people to bounce ideas off, but we have this amazing community out there of teachers doing Arduinos in schools. So just reach out. There are lots of us out there ready to help you. So th thank you so much, Damien, for your time and your insights. Very interesting conversation. I think teachers will find it very useful. Thank you so much for the chance to talk to you, your, your listeners. I, I love watching the, the Edivision every season it comes out and it's, yeah, it's just great to be a part of it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So thank you, Damien. And yes, you see in the end, there was the, um, the website. So damienkey.com if you want to know more about this work. Exactly. And again, you can uh, listen to the full interview with Damien Key on our podcast, and the name is Get Inspired, How to Make Programming and Coding Fun in Class. And also we have an article, right? Yeah. So it, it calls, should we teach programming or teach the idea of programming? And it's on our website. Yeah, and all this you can find from the Edivision website. Um, if we wanna, we can take a short clip from the podcast. Of course, let's, here. so you can see, uh, listen yeah. uh, an extract of the of the interview it's really really interesting yeah. in the past education was very much what we call the sage on the stage the sage being the expert who stands up the front and just pours out all the knowledge and the kids soak up all the knowledge we no longer have the sage on the stage we have what's called the guide on the side someone who doesn't have all the knowledge but knows where to find it and it guides the students so yeah. in the podcast, Damien gives more tips for educators how to get started with programming and share his insights on how teaching programming has evolved during the past 10 years or even more. Yeah. And if you listen to our podcast, you will also learn what secret talent Damien Key has. <laughs> exactly. It, it's very entertaining and very fun. I think you will enjoy it. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, what about if we talk about uh, our project today? Yeah, uh, to build our project, but also to build the four projects that Damien had. In his, in his presentation, you can use the Arduino Student Kit. Exactly. And so, we have it mm-hmm. here. So yeah. this is for one person. Yeah. It, it comes with all the most common electronic components and uh, a multimeter. Also, it comes with the UNO board, the R3. And uh, it comes also with a learning platform. So you can learn step by step how to build uh, different projects. And um, you have the content, you have a guide for teachers. So it's very useful for you if you don't have any experience. And actually, this kit doesn't require any previous experience if you want to get started with electronics and coding and programming. Yeah. So you can follow the, all the lessons that comes with the kit, but then you can also build whatever our Exactly. Projects. For example, the ones we just saw from Damien, mm-hmm. you can use these components to build multiple different kinds of projects. Yeah. And now for all of you watching this, we have a discount code for the student kit. Ooh. So we have 15% discount until end of this week. So Sunday, the 12th of September. September. Yeah. So it's great if you want to get started. I was uh, looking at some of the comments and some of them, some of you uh, want to get started and others already know. But if you want to try and explore uh, more, what can you do? This is a very good way to to do that. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for example, I can hear from... uh, Agustina from LinkedIn asked where we can find resources to teach IoT with Arduino. Exactly. So that's also possible with one of our education kit, the Explore IoT. You it's, can find them from there. The, <laughs> <laughs> you can find them from the education site of yeah. the different kits. Exactly. Also, if you want to know more about this student kit, mm-hmm. for sure. But yeah, I can I can present the yes. video. You take those, and I have the well. Actually, I can a project that Melissa built. Yes. Yeah. So I was I inspired from Damien's projects. One of the started projects, yeah, exactly. like, yeah that he built. So he had the automated hand there, mm-hmm. and uh, I also created one. So here you can see the kind of the stuff that I have. Uh, but we got actually the idea from Damien. So yeah. let me take the project from, from the Yeah, field. the project is here. So I have it here. And, and it's a uh, material that you can find easily at home, just cardboard and uh, what did you have? Tape, of course. Yeah. And Arduino Uno board. Yeah. A so board. Yeah, exactly. So for this one, let me share my whole screen so you can see. So I have the hand here. So this one has straws, string, uh, servo motor, cardboard. It's mm-hmm. really simple, nothing fancy. And then I have, uh, okay, you don't see it that much. I can share a picture of this too, but I have a click sensor. So the idea is that flex sensors, they're pretty expensive mm-hmm. and not that many schools have them. So you can create a one yourself. And I did that. I can I can share a picture of it. But the idea is that you could do, you could have this in your finger. You could have five of these in each finger. And when you do this, it bends with your finger. Or if you, for example, tape it to a club. So it bends with it. And so the hand moves together with it. Yeah, it's very and cool. We filmed a short clip that I can share so you so can you see, see it in action. You can yeah. See in action. Uh, one of the, I'm moving one of the flex sensors in this one, so you can see the hand doing this kind of exactly. Thing. So here, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I can show it again. Yes, again. Nice. So this is just for inspiration that of like course. the next version of Damien's project. He was, I was saying like, I want to build something from your project. And he was, do you have a flex sensor? I'm like, no, I don't, but can I build it? So yeah, I can. And if you're interested to know how to build it, let us know in the chat. So of course we can then create a tutorial for this. Exactly. And remember that uh, if you watch last uh, season, uh, we have really amazing projects from you guys. So we show some of them during the live. 
And we just want to tell you that you keep doing that, like build a project of if you already have one Arduino project, you can uh, share that with us. Mm -hmm. And then we can share with you uh, during the live. And you could also have the possibility of getting some cool Arduino goodies. Yes. So yeah, we, we love to see what are you doing with, with Arduino. And also th that's also very good because you can inspire others to start building stuff, exactly. right? So on our edivision site, we have this button, share your project. There. So if you go there and you have all the information, what to do, what information we need from you, what you can get. And I think the best part is that you get to be part of edivision. Yeah, and get some cool stuff. So, so yeah. And if you don't know what kind of projects, you can check, of course, uh, last episodes, so you can see what kind of projects the audience uh, were sending to us. Yeah. So yeah, check a that. Of, lots of like different kinds of that we haven't even thought about. Yeah, so they were great. Okay. So it doesn't have to be super, super, uh, super fancy or complex. No, it just send uh, what you are building. We will be more than happy to see what are you doing with Arduino. Yeah. Awesome. So many comments also today. There's yeah, there's a question. Can we use push button in the place of the hand sensor? Of course. I use the flex sensor to move yeah. the hand, but of course you could have a button. You could and you could have a string meter. for you could have five different servo motors, um, each finger going to one servo motor, and you exactly. could have five buttons or different different kinds of sensors that then trigger different fingers. So yeah. whatever comes to your mind. And if you're doing something like that, please share it with exactly. us. Exactly. So this is just like we are saying, it's just a, like an example, but you can do or tweak whatever you, you want to, one project that you see out there, you can make your own version. So that's totally fine. Yes, and please, you can add comments even after the live. You of can, course. Uh, you can comment our podcast, you can, you can contact us or contact our support if you have any questions. We're really happy to see many of you joining. Yeah, and also if you have an idea or a project that you would like to see, also let us know and we can yeah. build it. Or a guest that you would like to That's also, a, yeah, that's also true. Yeah. Nice. But that's it for today. Ooh, first episode of season four. Yes. So thank you for joining. And uh, uh, next week, yeah. we're going to celebrate a Software Freedom Day with a special guest, Natalie Duponcel from Montreal, Canada. Yeah, with Natalie, we're going to discuss maker education and open source. And she has a really cool project related to. Very cool. Area. Very useful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we will show also uh, an interactive project and much more. Yeah. So when is that? Next week? Next week. Next yeah. Thursday. Exactly. 16 at the same time, 5 p.m. Central European summer time. So don't miss that episode out. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for today. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Bye. Adios.